Okay, uh, today is the 14th or 15th of June 2019. I forgot to look up the date. And um, this is Tower Developments. And I'm going to look at four cards in a sample horoscope spread that somebody asked me about. But before I get to that, I wanted to speak a little bit about astrology and what it is partly so you know um but it it may be some the, the there may be some other reason why i'm telling you this that i maybe will realize in a week or two but i want to tell you this now and kind of get it out the way um and the point is astrology is everything because in a horoscope, in a natal horoscope, um, it tells you about the native, about let's say it's you. It tells you about you, your strengths and weaknesses, what you're good at, what you're bad at. Um, it tells you what it tells you what you're afraid of. It gives you information about partnerships, children, sickness, business, friends, hopes, enemies, friends, enemies. Um, all sorts of different areas of life. It tells you about your past, your present, and your future. It can even tell you if you accept past lives, it can tell you about your other lifetimes. So it's complete, but it's complicated. And most people um, begin a horoscope by talking about an aspect between planets. And the first statement or two that they make can be accurate enough but as they talk more about the aspect between, let's say, two planets, it becomes less and less specific and more and more general and more and more wrong or inapplicable. Because let's say the, the aspect is between Saturn and Venus. So you can make a statement about Saturn square Venus means this, and that's probably true enough. But then if it also is supposed to mean this, the problem is that Saturn in one horoscope or for one person, Saturn might rule the ascendant. If you have Capricorn rising, it's ruled by Saturn. So in for one person, the Saturn square Neptune describes or works with the self because the first house is the house of self. But in somebody else, they can have Capricorn in the fifth house, which means that the Venus square Saturn behavior or circumstances affects their children and not so much them. And this is why it's complicated. And because it, it gets more complex and you've got to incorporate other factors and other considerations because you could find it in even two people with Capricorn rising with Saturn square Venus. One of them can have Venus ruling um, or aspecting the sun, whereas the other one can have Venus aspecting um, Mars, which is different. So you, you, you very quickly begin to see exceptions to the rule. But people who call themselves astrologers generally don't incorporate or factor in those subtleties and those other factors and those other influences. So they very quickly get off track. Where, so th this that's that's part of it. And it, whereas the tower is much more manageable, and I, I'm not saying it's easier, but it's it's more accessible, and we can m more quickly get the hang of it, and be able to make sense of cards. Um, and this is one of the reasons why you cannot mix astrology and the tarot. I know I'm kind of doing it with a horoscope spread, but that's really just the, the layout. We're not dealing with planetary influences or signs and and how and um, aspects and the rest of it. Um, but there are good reasons why you don't combine astrology with the tarot. Okay, um, so uh, when it comes to horoscope spreads. There was, there was a little bit of confusion, as I saw from a comment that somebody left. So the, the reason I, I mentioned the horoscope spread in the beginning or a few weeks ago or a couple of weeks ago was um, so that somebody could 
uh, begin to practice and get better with reading cards on his own. And so I suggested a horoscope spread because you've got 12 areas of life. And what you do is, it's not, I, I suggested that taking your time as well. And so take one day to just, to consider each card. And it wasn't laying a card for the next 12 days, the 12 houses, but it wasn't for the next 12 days. It was more, on day one, you, you've got a card that describes the self. So you take a full day to think about what that card would mean describing the self and what it means for you. Let's say it's your spread, what it means for you. Because if you're doing a, a, hor a, a horoscope spread or a tarot reading with somebody, you've got maybe, what, 30 minutes, an hour. Um, you haven't got that much time to go into detail. But if you're doing a horoscope spread for yourself, you can lay the card, you can turn the first card, and you can take a day or two or three or a week to think about what that particular card means in that circumstance. But because it's the first house, it's describing you, the questioner. And then let's, let, let's say you do one day for each card. Then tomorrow you're looking at the card in the second house. So that's telling you about your value sense. And you've got time to think about what you care about, what you value, what's important to you, and how the card in the second house describes what's important. Um, and then the following day you look at the third house, which describes how you communicate. So you've got, for instance, the Eight of Swords in the third house. So how do you communicate? You're not that outgoing because the person's tied up or, or else you tend to talk about serious matters or things that are important. And, be, you know, and because the person's blindfolded, maybe you're never quite sure or you're not quite sure what to say or how to go about saying it. So you, you can take a day and you remember things or you realize things over the course of the day and then you make some notes. So you've got time to go through this slowly and um, develop understanding of how to relate a card and the illustration to a particular area of life. So it's it's and so the thing is, I, I'm this is a kind of other question as well. If if you're reading for somebody else, you've you've got to give them the answer in half an hour. So you you just have to get to the point and speak and do what you can. But if you're asking about something for you, and there was somebody uh, recently she's got a problem or a complicated family situation. And she was picking, she was trying horoscope spreads and Celtic crosses, and it was all too much. She got more cards than she could handle. And so my suggestion to her was pick one card for what, what do you do next or what do you do first? And think about that for a day. And then tomorrow, pick another card for what do you do, what step two. And so over the course of a few days, Instead of being thrown in at the deep end and over and turning over 12 cards or 10 cards and trying to make sense of it all at once, what you do is you get into the answer step by step or you get into it slowly and you uncover information and you come up with more information or follow up questions that could be important. So one card at a time over the course of a few days and it's leading you step by step into a solution because maybe there isn't one solution. Maybe there's a whole bunch of them that apply to answer the, the particular or to deal with the particular situation that you find yourself in. And it's unreasonable to expect that one card or two cards are going to give you the complete answer. Okay, that was a long introduction. So the questioner laid 12 cards but was interested in four of them the first the card for the self was the seven of cups upside down 
So this is describing the self. This is what kind of shape he's in at the moment and for a bit into the future. Um, so it's a seven of cups, but it's upside down. So we can say something isn't quite right with you at the moment. Now, and because I'm, I'm, I've got a time limit here, let, let's say we look at the seven cups and say you've got a number of things you would like to happen or ideas that you would like to put into practice represented by the seven cups. But it's upside down. So either you haven't thought them through properly. And if you were to reconsider your goals or your ideas or the, the results that you would want for yourself, you discover that they're not quite what you thought they were right now. So there can be good reasons for assessing and analyzing what it is that you think you want to do. Either that or you know what you want to do, but you haven't actually started doing it yet. So if you're clear about what it is that you want to do, start doing it because the card is upside down and that's an indication that you're not going to want to. You, you, you're going to procrastinate. Whereas, whereas if you're not quite sure what it is that you want, now is the time to put the time, the put the effort into figuring out what it is that you want to do and what improvements you want to make with yourself or for yourself or in your life. The the card opposite the the, the seventh house that he wanted to know about as well was the ten of cups upside down. So here we've got another upside down card. So again, things aren't quite right when it comes to the relationships and partnerships. So. It can be an indication that because 10 is 1 plus, nothing gets you back to 1 again. It's time to make a new start. But don't go, because the card is upside down, don't go into it ready to make the same mistakes that you made in the past relationship. Because with a 10 upside down, it can be, it's important to look to what has already gone on and figure out what worked and what didn't work and figure out when it didn't work, what are you going to do instead if it comes up again in the next relation, in this case, in the next relationship. Um, I'm rushing here to be, because of the of the time. OK, so we've got the Ten of Cups reversed in the seventh house. So are you looking for some if you're looking for somebody else it's going to be delayed they're not going to come as quickly as you want because it's a 10 and it's upside down but it's time to make a new start but also going back to that seven of cups reversed if you can figure out what changes you want to make for yourself and what improvements you want to make on yourself then you're going to change and you'll attract new people and more suitable people into your life but when you're when you're confused and unwilling to, to be clear about your goals and what it is that you want, then you're going to attract uncertainty and uncertain people into your life. And that can be represented by the Ten of Cups upside down. The other two houses were the Twelfth, which happens to be the House of Karma. But in the House of Karma, we've got the Six of Cups upright. So it looks, looking at the First, the Seventh and the Twelfth, it looks like there's some new important karmic relationship in in the cards we could say or it's there for him if he wants it if he's willing to to spot it and this can be one of the reasons for figuring out what you care about and what you want and what you're thinking and what happened in relationships that have gone bad in the past because if you know those uh, answers to those kinds of questions, then you're going to be able to recognize the new love interest represented by the Six of Cups who's going to appear in your life. And the fourth card that he wanted to know about was the, the Sixth House, which was the Knight of Pentacles upright. So the Sixth House shows sickness and service. So if it's if he wants to know about his health, it looks good because we've got the night, it's movement, it's energy, it's upright, it's pentacles, which represents money, but it also represents values. So he knows what he wants, what he cares about when it comes to matters of health. So that 
Seven of Cups can be if he's ever thought about doing meditation or some kind of, of yoga or some kind of exercise that's kind of meditative as well. Now is the time to do it and his health will benefit because we've got the Knight of Cup, uh, the Knight of Pentacles in the sixth house. But the sixth can also represent the services you're meant to perform. So he's meant to be a messenger because knights are messengers and bring change. And pentacles represents money, but it also represents values. So he's meant to, or if he begins to communicate and express and pass on what he values and what he cares about and what he has found interesting and useful and beneficial in his life, that's good behavior on his part. And I was thinking, when I was thinking about this a few minutes ago, I thought maybe he starts a blog and he, every day or twice a week, three times a week, he posts um, an inspirational quote or something that he's found interesting. Or maybe he writes about something he discovered or something he learned about how to live better, about how to solve a problem. And he writes about it and posts it on a blog. And somebody somewhere maybe more than one person is going to read that blog and be inspired by it or be um, motivated to do something for themselves because of the good idea that he gave them through the blog. That kind of thing is putting together knights as messengers, pentacles as values, as well as being of service to other people. There are other, but the thing is, if he takes a day to think about the Knight of Pentacles upright in the house of service, he's going to come up with um, other ideas and it will remind him of things he's thought about and rejected in the past and maybe he'll be more motivated to actually follow through on his own ideas. Okay, this is longer than I had expected it to be. So I'm going to suddenly stop and I'll see you in a day or so. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.